Let's look at digital imaging systems now, specifically digital radiography. We will talk a little bit about digital image receptor, the direct capture and conversion, flat panel detectors, thin film transistors, otherwise known as TFT, and we will look at indirect conversion DR. A little bit of introduction, the photodetector or amorphous silicon, a charge coupled device, and the complementary metal oxide semiconductor, otherwise known as the CMOS. So again, computed radiography was the first step in moving X-ray departments to digital imaging. However, CR did not streamline the imaging process when compared to film screen imaging. The need for wet chemicals and a dark room for image processing were eliminated along with the space that was formerly used for the purpose of filing film images. So we no longer had a dark room or a film library. Advances in computer technology have led to direct digital imaging, which has really streamlined or reduced the steps in the imaging chain. So let's take a look at these sections. So let's talk about the flat panel detector. DR, or digital image receptors, is a term that's used to describe digital image receptors that do not require a plate reader. The image is captured and the data is, is transmitted to the computer system for processing. The image receptor then is immediately ready for a new exposure. DR, or direct imaging, direct radiography, may involve a cassette or it may be cassetteless. DR systems, again, have in many cases reduced the number of steps in the imaging process and they have eliminated the need for cassettes, thereby somewhat reducing operating costs. DR imaging systems have in many cases eliminated the need for cassettes to be carried from place to place, and they have overall reduce the number of steps required in the entire imaging chain. DR technology utilizes flat panel detectors with thin film transmitters in both direct and indirect digital systems. The difference between direct and indirect capture is whether or not a simulator material is needed. Direct capture flat panel detectors use a photoconductor, which converts exit radiation into an electronic signal. Indirect capture flat panel detectors, they need a scintillator material to capture the remnant beam and to convert the X-ray photons into light photons. They use a two-step process. Those steps are, first, they convert incoming X-ray photons into light photons, and then they convert those light photons to an electronic signal using a photoconductor.
direct capture conversion systems were originally cassetteless systems, with the image receptor being an integral part of the X ray unit itself. The flat panel detector replaced the Bucky assembly and was never touched by the technologist. Traditional X ray units had to be replaced if the department was converting from film screen technology to digital imaging. Today, there are wireless detectors that can be used with existing X-ray equipment. Termed direct, because there is no need for light conversion, these systems directly convert the X-ray photons that are exiting from the patient into an electronic signal. They use a photoconductor and a thin film transistor array. The TFT is a complex circuit that collects electrons. TFTs have an electronic switch on a flat panel detector that allows the charge collected at each pixel to be independently transferred to external electronics where they are amplified and digitized. The photoconductor used in direct conversion systems is amorphous selenium, or A hyphen capital S E. Photoconductors are materials that will absorb X-rays and they can immediately convert them into electrons, which are then collected and stored by the thin film transistor in the array. Incident X-ray photons interact with the amorphous selenium and they create elect electron holes through direct ionization of the selenium. The electrical charges are in proportion to the amount of X-ray exposure that was received. The charges are collected in a storage capacitor in the TFT and remain there until the readout by switching action of the TFT. The flat panel detector array is designed in layers. The top layer is a bias electrode followed by amorphous selenium, and then the thin film transistors array, which are connected to the storage capacitors. The TFTs then read the signal and transmit it to a computer workstation. Thin film transistors is a photosensitive array of electronic components that are layered into a glass foundation. They include the readout, the charge collector, and the light sensitive elements. The TFT flat panel is made up of a network of pixels or detector elements, otherwise referred to as DELs. The detector elements collect the electrons that represent the individual components of the image. The thin film transistors constructed into a network of pixels or detector elements, the DELs. Each detector element has a switch and 
as a storage area. When the switch is activated, the storage signal is sent to the computer. The detector elements collect the electrons that represent the individual components of the image. The number of electrons that are deposited then in the individual detector elements corresponds to the number or the amount of radiation that strikes each area. Here we see the X-ray striking the amorphous selenium. As electrons are extracted from the thin film transmitters, they are sent to the analog to digital capacitor, which sends the signal to the computer. DELs automatically and immediately are erased. The size of the detector elements right here determines the spatial resolution of a flat panel detector. As the size of the DEL increases, the spatial resolution decreases. This is very similar to when we talk about pixels in a matrix. The smaller the pixel size, the greater the resolution. The larger the pixel size, the less the resolution. So let's look at indirect conversion, DR. Indirect capture systems are really similar to direct capture, except they are scintillator based, meaning the X-ray photons in the remnant beam must be converted to light photons by the scintillator and those light photons are then converted to an electrical signal. The scintillator material is usually a phosphor, such as gadolinium oxysulfide, which is a turbid, or thallium doped cesium iodide, which is a needle. And remember, we talked about both of those. The phosphor absorbs the X-ray photons and it produces visible light. The light that's emitted by the phosphor interacts with the amorphous silicone, which is a photoconductor, and that converts the light photons into electrons. The electrons are captured by the TFTs and they produce the electrical signal that is stored on a capacitor until it is released by the thin film transistors for readout and sent to the ADC. It's a very complex process. As mentioned previously, the light that's emitted by the phosphor interacts with amorphous silicone, which is a photoconductor, and that converts the light photons into electrons. The electrons are captured by the TFTs, and that produces the electrical signal that is stored in or on a capacitor until it is released by the thin film transistors for readout and sent to the analog to digital converter. Here we see a side view of the CSI scintillator, the silicon photodiode, 
And here we can look inside and see the matrix with the individual TFTs and the analog to digital converter down here in the corner. So what is a charged coupled device? The CCD or charged coupled device is a light sensitive device that's used in digital photography and in digital imaging systems. CCDs were used in early indirect conversion digital imaging systems, and they can still be found in medical imaging applications, according to Carter and Veal. X-ray photons that exit the patient will interact with the scintillator material, generally um, gadolinium oxysulfide or cesium iodide, which then emits light. The light is sent by lenses or fiber optics to the charged couple device. The amount of light emitted by the scintillator is in proportion to the radiation that exits the patient and interacts with the scintillator. The CCD is very sensitive to even low levels of light. CCD converts the light into an electrical charge that is stored on small capacitors. The charge is released in sequence, and according to Carter and Veal, it is then sent to the analog to digital converter. So what is a complementary metal oxide semiconductor? A CMOS or complementary metal oxide semiconductor, these systems were developed by NASA actually, similar to charged coupled devices, they need a scintillator material. A semiconductor is a solid chemical element or compound that conducts electricity under some conditions. When X-ray photons strike the scintillator, they are converted into light photons and stored in capacitors. Each detector element or DEL, which is in the system, has its very own amplifier, which when switched on and off by a circuitry in the DELs. This converts the light photons into electrical charges, which are sent to the analog to digital converter to be converted into digital data and finally to be processed by the computer. So here we see a photon to electron conversion and the charge to the voltage conversion. Again, these CMOSs require a scintillation material to be able to convert the X-ray photons to light photons. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, digital image characteristics in this section. Um, it's going to explain more the importance of spatial resolution, contrast resolution, modulation transfer function, and signal to noise ratio. Um, in obtaining good image quality. A lot of these terms are very familiar with everyone. So hopefully this will be um, 
a renewal of information that you already know. So all images, regardless of which technology is being used, are composed of a matrix or a combination of rows and columns of small squares. We call these small squares picture elements or referred to as pixels. Each pixel is recorded in a single numeric value, which is represented as a signal, as a single brightness level on our monitors. The location of the pixel within the matrix corresponds to an area within the patient or a volume of tissue. The dimensions of the image matrix are called the field of view or FOV. For a given anatomic area or FOV field of view, a matrix size of 1024 by 1024 has 1,048,576 individual pixels, whereas a matrix of 2,048 by 2,048 has 4,193,304 pixels, many more pixels. The image quality is improved with a larger matrix size and smaller pixels, as we talked about earlier. However, the computer processing time network, transmission time, and storage space for the image just increases as the matrix size increases. So again, the computer processing time, the network transmission, and the storage space increases if our matrix size increases. In diagnostic imaging, the field of view or matrix size is determined by the size of the detector. However, in other modalities, such as CT or MRI, the technologist can select the field of view for each exam. The spatial resolution in digital imaging systems depends on the matrix size, the pixel size, and the grayscale bit depth. So here we see a matrix column number and row number. A matrix itself is an arrangement of numerical values in a square of rows and columns. Each individual square is a pixel, which is the smallest element in a digital image. Each pixel in a digital image represents a discrete numerical value that corresponds to a brightness level or shade of gray. Each pixel can be identified by its column and row, also known as its address or location. Because a larger matrix contains smaller pixels, the larger the matrix, the better the spatial resolution of the image. An image with a greater number of pixels per unit area would have greater pixel density. In addition to the size of the pixel, the spacing or the distance measured from the center of a pixel to an adjacent pixel 
determines the pixel pixel pitch. So an example from the center of one to the next pixel determines that pixel pitch. Increasing pixel density and decreasing pixel pitch increases spatial resolution. Decreasing pixel density and increasing pixel pitch decreases spatial density. So when you increase pixel pitch, that means that your pixel has to be larger because that is the distance from the center of a pixel to the next pixel. So if it is bigger, that distance is greater. That causes a decrease in spatial resolution. So the thin film transistors that we talked about are arranged in panels of pixels or detector elements. Pixel size in DR is determined by the size of the DEL and affects the pixel pitch and the spatial resolution. Detector elements are positioned in a matrix and that matrix allows the charge pattern to read out on a pixel by pixel basis. Each detector element includes a sensing area, the capacitor, and thin film transistors. Detector elements that are not sensitive to charge take up a certain amount of space. The fill factor refers to the sensing area compared to the non-sensing area, according to Carlton and Adler. It is the percentage of the pixel or detector element face that is sensitive to x-rays, according to Bouchon. For example, if a detector has a fill factor of 80%, then the other 20% would be covered by the electronics. The fill factor has a direct relationship with both the spatial resolution and the contrast resolution. And according to Carlton and Adler, detectors with a higher fill factor will provide a higher spatial resolution and contrast resolution. So sample frequency. Sample frequency is the number of pixels that are sampled per millimeter. It controls spatial resolution in CR. More pixels sampled means increased spatial resolution. However, sample frequency can change from vendor to vendor. It varies from five pixels per millimeter to 20 pixels per millimeter. The choice of sample frequency is based on the plate size and you may be able to select it from the main menu. So again, low sample frequency, fewer samples, larger pixel size, lower spatial resolution. And high sample frequency gives us smaller pixel sizes, which means there are more of them, and then higher spatial resolution. So spatial resolution then depends on the imaging plate size as well. CR readers really scan at a relatively constant frequency of about 2000 by 2000 pixels. Using the smallest imaging plate possible results in the highest sampling frequency and thus in higher spatial resolution. 
Again, smaller cassettes have higher spatial resolution because they have smaller pixels and therefore there are more pixels per millimeter. So finally, the Nyquist frequency, we saw that in a question earlier. The Nyquist theorem applies to CR imaging. The Nyquist frequency determines the maximum spatial resolution for a given sample frequency. The Nyquist theorem states that if a spatial resolution is desired, the sampling frequency must be two times that. So, for example, a 2.5 line pair per millimeter requires a sampling frequency of five pixels per millimeter. And if we wanted a signal resolution or a spatial resolution, for five line pairs per millimeter, the frequency must be of sampling 10 pixels per millimeter. So let's look at contrast resolution when we talk about image quality. Contrast resolution is the ability of the digital system to display various shades of gray and also the ability to distinguish between small objects. When we increase contrast resolution, that means that there are more shades of gray within the image. And therefore, the visibility of small anatomic structures has increased, and that results in increased spatial resolution. So again, talking about image quality, let's look at pixel bit depth. Each pixel has a bit depth or number of bits that determines the number of shades of gray that each pixel is capable of recording. The pixel bit depth determines the accuracy of the digitized analog signal and the pixel brightness or gray level. Bit depth is determined by the analog to digital converter. The higher the bit depth allows for a greater number of shades of gray to be displayed on the monitor, and it gives us better contrast resolution. Contrast to noise ratio is not a term that most of you are unfamiliar with. We all know what contrast to noise ratio means. It is a method of describing the contrast resolution that's compared with the amount of noise in the image. Digital images with a higher contrast to noise ratio will increase the visibility of anatomic tissues. Noise, especially when we're talking about quantum noise, limits our ability to see an object's edge and again limits the spatial resolution. A high signal to noise ratio indicates that a higher efficient system that displays little noise or has higher spatial resolution. Here we have a one-to-one -one signal to noise ratio, a two-to-one signal to noise ratio, and a five-to-one signal to noise ratio. 
Again, remember we talked about needle phosphors. They tend to have a higher signal to noise ratio than turbide phosphors. And therefore needle phosphors have better spatial resolution. So modulation transfer function, otherwise known as MTF. The theorem states that the sum of the components in a recording system cannot be greater than the system as a whole. This means when any part of an imaging system is compromised, the overall quality of the system is affected according to Carter and Veal. Modulation transfer function is expressed as a ratio and it quantifies the contribution of each system, the system component to the overall efficiency of the entire system. Let me say that again. The modular transfer function is expressed as a ratio and that ratio quantifies the contribution of each system component to the overall efficiency of the entire system. So modulation transfer function is the recorded detail or resolution over the available detail or resolution. Of MTF of one, or 100% would mean a perfect system. System efficiency, in which we will show how detective quantum efficiency is measured and how it affects the obtained image and the patient dose. So detective quantum efficiency, or DQE, is a measure of the receptor's ability to create an output signal that accurately represents the input signal, or X-ray beam. The image receptor must absorb, convert, and emit efficiently. When placed on a graft of IR materials, you can compare these receptors based on their ability to produce images that exhibit given level of spatial frequency. High spatial frequency represents a larger number of viewable objects in an image. A higher DQE indicates a receptor is more efficient in converting the input signal and therefore allows for lower exposure. So the goal of detective quantum efficiency is to be able to choose an image receptor with the highest absorption efficiency, the greatest conversion efficiency, and finally, the highest DQE to achieve the lowest patient dose. 